Are you new to studying the Bible and you're wondering where to start from? Well, in this video, I'll be sharing five tips that you'll find helpful as you begin your journey of Bible study. Even if you're a young believer or maybe you are You've been a Christian for a long time, but you're now committing to personal Bible study. Or maybe you might even be a non-Christian, but you just want to even read this Bible and know what they're talking about. These five tips I'm going to be sharing in this video, you'll find them extremely helpful. So if you're interested in this, let's get to the five tips. Tip number one, find an easy to read Bible version. I know that many people swear by the King James Version. They're like, this is the one you should read. But the thing I found about King James Version is that it is written in Old English and many people find it difficult to read. I personally actually started reading the Bible, my journey of Bible study with the King James Version when I was 13 years old. But what helped me was because I was kind of, you know, familiar with um, Shakespeare's works and I had read lots of his works in Old English. So it helped me. And another thing I like about the King James Version is that, you know, it's kind of poetic and it helps me to you know, when I, I want to memorize some particular Bible verses, it helps me to remember them. But beyond that, I also make use of all these um, easy to read versions because there are some things that you might read in King James Version and it won't make much sense to you. But when you read them in, in the easy to read Bible versions, it will make more sense to you. It, you, it, you resonate more with it. So I highly recommend you getting an easy to read version and there is a bible app i have although i read i have the you know the hard copy of a bible i have this bible app called um blb that's a blue letter bible and it has maybe about like it has lots of easy to read versions so i'm going to put a link to that particular um the bible app in the description description box below so if you want to check it out and then you can download and look for the bible version that works best for you so that is tip number one you find an easy to read Bible version. Tip number two, ask God to help you to understand. It might seem like, you might feel like, okay, if I pray, will it work? Your own duty is just to ask and God's duty is to help you understand. And one prayer I normally pray is found in the Bible. It says, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Or you can just simply say, Lord, please help me to understand your word as I study. I want to learn more about you. I want to know more about you. So speak to me in a language that I can understand. One thing I've found out is that when you pray, you might think it's not working, but you need to keep reading. You need to keep studying. Tip number three, start with the book of Genesis. You know, when you want to solve a problem or when you want to find the answer to something, it's good to go to the very root of the thing. Where did this thing begin from? So when we talk about the book of Genesis, it is where Bible tells us about how the world began, how man came into being, how wickedness get, got into the world. You know, it talks about how man was in the beginning. Man was innocent without sin. And then how did sin come into the world and how did it escalate into, you know, the levels that we have it now. So that book of Genesis gives us like a foundation on which to understand, you know, what God is saying. When God says things like, you know, that all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Or when we now talk about, okay, Jesus being born by a virgin, what is the reason for this and all that. So the book of um, Genesis gives us a foundation on which to understand how, you know, the, uh, Jesus came into the world and all that. So after reading the book of Genesis, next thing I recommend you do is you go straight to the New Testament and start from the very first book, which is the book of Matthew. And you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What these books talk about is like, you know, the life of Jesus, his birth into the world, his teachings, you know, the way he lived, his miracles, you know, his his worldview on so many topics. And also it talk, talk, talks about how he died and how he resurrected and the instructions he gave to disciple his disciples. So what these books do for you is that it will help you to understand what Christianity is about because Christianity is from the name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the one that instituted Christianity. Okay, so it will, it's like the foundation of Christianity. By the time you finish reading this, it will help you to understand that this is what God wants. Like, for example, you read the book of Matthew chapter 5. We have the Beatitudes there. It says, blessed are the merciful for they will obtain mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, they will be called the sons of God. You see, it's like the constitution of God's kingdom. It helps you to better understand how does God think? What does God really want from us? And then when you now move on to the book of Acts, the book of Acts it basically tells us about how the church as we know it now you know was instituted 
and uh, the, the way that they lived according to the teachings of Jesus Christ and how by the mere fact of living by the principles of Jesus, they were able to turn the world upside down. They were just a few, a handful of people, but they were able to make so much wave in the world. So after studying the book of Acts, you can then move on to studying the entire um, New Testament. But from the book of Romans onwards, if you prefer, you can read maybe one or two chapters from Romans and then move on and find a chapter in Old Testament and read. And why do I suggest this? Is because if you try to read the Old Testament all through, you're trying to read, okay, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, like those first three, four books, they can be overwhelming because they have so many laws. You shall do this. You shall not do this. It's overwhelming. So I'll quickly recap. Um, you start from Genesis you move on to the New Testament, read Gen um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then you continue the entire um, New Testament, all the while picking one or two uh, chapters from the Old Testament to help you get a balanced view of how God used to, you know, to relate with people versus how he's relating with us now. So we'll go on straight to tip number four, and it is that you, when you study, don't just look at what God can do or what God has done. Look for the principles behind what God is doing. What do I mean by that? Many uh, of us as Christians, when we study the Bible, we're like, oh, wow, God made the lame to walk. Wow, God made, uh, God, Jesus walked on water. Whoa, he even raised the dead. So we kind of keep looking at what God can do. But I found out that the more you keep looking at what God can do, it becomes all about what he can do. And that is what has made our Christianity of today to be of no effect, to not, to not be relevant, to not be powerful. So I'll give an example of what I mean by you, you looking for principles when you study, not just what God can do. For example, let's say you read the book of Math, um, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. It tells us that in the beginning that God made the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form. It was void. It, there was chaos everywhere. The water covered the whole surface. There was darkness everywhere. And then the Holy Spirit of God kept hovering over the water and hovering over the water. And at the end of it all, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And that was the beginning of creation. That is one principle we can learn. When we are faced with problems in life, do all you can to avoid throwing your hands in the air and giving up. When you move through those problems, don't look at it with, oh, I'm finished. Oh, I give up. Look at it from what good can come out of this. What good can come out of this? Did I lose a loved one? What good can come out of this? Did I lose my job? What good can come out of this? Am I having problems in my marriage? What good can come out of this? How can I make things better? So that is a way to read the Bible. Tip number five, which is persist. When you start, you're going to feel like sleepy. You're going to sleep off. <laughs> you're going to not understand. You're going to forget. You're going to, it's going to be boring. But if you can persist, if you can keep showing up every single day, not because it's a duty, if you keep persisting, you will see change in the way you understand. You will begin to hear God talking to you through his word. Just like we have law of gravity, law of this, law of that, there are laws of life. And there are many beliefs that we hold from our culture, from our background. Some of them are not laws of life. If we follow those laws, they are going to lead us astray. But the more you study the word of God, it washes you from within. Bible also says in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1 that we should not be conformed to this world. We should not follow the traditions and systems of this world, but we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So if we keep studying the word of God, what we're actually doing is that we are reprogramming our mind using the owner's manual. So it's just like when a, a laptop has a problem and you are reprogramming it using the owner's original manual. That is the best thing that you can do for yourself. So as I said, tip number five is persist. Even when it feels like nothing is happening, keep doing it. The more you scrub, it's as if you're washing your insides. You're washing your mind. You're detoxing your mind from all the lies, from, you know, all the lies of religion, from all the lies of culture, from all the things, you know, all the traumas, all the pain, and you are putting on the mind of God. And what's an amazing thing to do. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'm going to quickly re recap. Tip number one, find an easy to read version. Tip number two, pray and ask God for help. Tip number three, 
Start from Gen- Genesis and then move on to New Testament. Tip number four, don't just look at what God can do. Look at the principles behind what he can do. And then tip number five, persist. Don't give up. Keep doing it over and again. And you're going to see a change in, in your life. You're going to fall in love with God. You're going to begin to hear God speaking to you in your mind through his word. So what are you going to do with what we've talked about today? I want to challenge you. If you really want to start this journey of Bible studying, I'll encourage you after watching this video to bring out your Bible if you have one and read the book of Genesis chapter one only (laughs) just to kickstart it. And then if you don't have a Bible, I will encourage you to go ahead and check in the description box and download the free Bible app, the, the BLB, Blue Letter Bible app is a free app and find is the version that works best for you inside the app and then read Genesis chapter one. And then finally, <laughs> the third thing I would like you to do is to kindly click, click the subscribe button and the notification bell right beside the subscribe button so that you can receive notifications when I upload new videos. So also, I would like to hear from you. Did you learn anything from today's video? Is there anything you would like me to make a video about? Thank you for your time and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.